Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. Thanks for watching my video. If you're new to my channel, it's all about concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, please hit subscribe. Today, the boss isn't here. Yeah, that's right. I'm gone. I'm on vacation. So it's just Darren on the right, Luke there in the middle, and then Abby over there on the left. So I want you guys to tell me, how do you think, how do you think things go without the boss there? Do they go just as smoothly or not? And what's your, what has been your experience with that if you have a company and you're not around? And, you know, how do your employees act or react when you're not around? Do things go just like when you're there or not? So anyway, I want you guys to tell me that. Oh, there's a big concrete ball we found. Um, you guys get those in your loads too so once in a while? Let me know down in the comments. But let me know at the end of the video anyway what you guys think. How did Darren, Luke, and Abby do on this as far as getting this poured? both loaded off and then they obviously they power trial this and they saw it too but it just got the pour in the video and you can see Darren and Luke work pretty good together also hey let me know would you guys think they're brothers or what let me know that down the video too and I'll let you know <laughs> later on um, but usually you know when you're pouring concrete everybody's got a role there's always something to do and it's important that nobody argues over what to do, that things just get done. And that's the way we're used to doing things, is nobody really cares what anybody else does. Everybody can pretty much do the same thing, you know, except for Abby here. Abby's kind of new. She just works in the summers. But as far as me and Luke and Darren, the three of us, it, we just like to get things done. Get it in, get it done, and then, you know, then we're moving on to the next one or we got time to sit and wait for the concrete to cure before we power trial it but the key for us porn is just everybody just do something and get it done it doesn't really matter what we do is how we feel so whether it's considered like a laborers type of job or a finishers type of job that stuff doesn't really matter to us it all has to get done and it's just important really that no one really argues over who does what but every, I, every once in a while you know I have to go do either I'm either I'm out on uh, meeting people or I'm doing on a different job or in a rare occasion like this one I'm actually gone on a family vacation so and then Darren and Luke you know they gotta pour they gotta take care of the pours for that week that I'm gone or the day that I'm gone or whatever so they they do all the scheduling they, they line everything up, they figure the concrete, they set the grades, and they get the pours done. What was pretty cool, this, this summer we actually had, you know, Abby. So we actually had my daughter too, but my daughter's with me on vacation. So there was five of us for this summer. So it, it's definitely a lot easier pouring when there's three people, you know, especially if, if two guys are going to screed by hand like the way we do it, which you'll see here in a minute. It's nice to have that other person that can rake the concrete a little bit and just it helps keep you from stopping quite so much. It just makes the pour go that much faster. Um, this was actually Abby's first summer, so she's learning. She's a, she's a quick learner, though. She picked it up really quick and does a really good job. Darren's shooting the grades. We wet screed everything. We don't put any pipes, any stakes, or anything like that into screed off from. Um, we just make wet pads. We strike a pad in the wet concrete itself like the guys are doing right here. And then we screed right off that wet pad. And it's just, it's the way we do it. We don't dig in. We don't create humps or anything like that. We get our floors nice and flat this way. Uh, it does take a little bit of practice to get it, get it right. But when you can screed like that and just kick your way backwards, it's actually pretty fast. And see how in sync those guys are. I mean, they've been doing it for years and years and years. The bending over part, I mean, it looks like it would bother you, but that's that's not really what bothers you as much when you do that kind of stuff. I guess probably if you know if you do a lot of it, like thousands of square feet, the back of your legs actually is what would bother you first. Your hamstrings, as long as the rakers can keep the creep down you know so it's not too high it's actually not too bad screeding concrete that way
the floors do get pretty flat too we you know we we go back and check them every occasionally then we got to saw cut them we'll power trial this nice and smooth today we'll get the saw cuts in today um, so the, it'll be completely 100% done today. We always use fiberglass reinforcement in case you guys are wondering why there's no wire rebar in there. We use 3500 PSI mix with fiber mesh in it and that's just what's specced in it. We're actually a sub for the foundation contractor. So the foundation contractor is the one that writes up the contract between them and either the builder or the homeowner, one or the other, whoever hires them. And then the foundation contractor hires us to come in and do their floors. So I'm not really in the bidding process at all. I'm not in the design process. It's just they pay me a fee to come in and pour and finish the concrete, and that's it. For these guys that I'm working for today, I actually just charge the concrete to them. I call up, I come here and I, I shoot my grades, I figure the concrete, and then I call the concrete company up and I schedule everything. I tell them how many yards and just charge it to the people that I'm working for and then when I get done I just send them an invoice for pour and finish you know labor to pour and finish so I don't get involved with the wire if there's any the rebar if there's any uh, putting down poly if there's any all jobs are a little different depending on what's spec but I don't I don't have to price that or put that in a contract or anything like that You can see Darren, when I'm not there, Darren's usually the one running the shoot. Um, he just prefers that, and Luke actually prefers to do the raking like that. It's, so that makes that part pretty easy. <laughs> they don't have to worry about who does what there. And then Abby's a good bull floater, so, I mean, that's always something that's got to get done after you screed. So that makes it pretty good that she can do that while these guys are still dumping. It helps speed the whole job up a little bit faster. Bull floating is pretty easy to learn. I mean, that's probably out of all the things that we do, that's one of the easiest things to teach, I think. Still got to be done right in order. I mean, you don't want to create a hump or a dip with a bull float. But if you can have patience with somebody and just give them a minute a minute or two to get the, the hang of using that thing, that's pretty easy to do. Raking the concrete, like what Luke's doing right there, getting it raked, having a good eye for the level of that, that's, that's something that takes some time. That's pretty easy to get high or low. Um, it just takes quite a bit of time to have a good eye for that. Get get raking it as flat as you possibly can. It's better actually to have it just a little high. We'd prefer to have it a little bit high than low, that's for sure. When we go to screed, we wanna be pulling the concrete back. We don't wanna be stopping and having to pull more concrete back up. And then we have a chalk line on the outside edge to the inside of that foundation that we're going by. And then we mag float our pad to that. And then once that mag, once that gets magged around the edges, it gives you something to kind of go back and fine tune the rough grade to. So that makes it a little bit more helpful before you screed to do that. Darren will stop him. He'll leave a little hole at the end in case they're high so they can pull it into that hole instead of just filling the whole thing in and then having to shovel out a big mess. So now, I mean, Darren's gonna go over there. He's off the video right this second, but he's gonna mag, stop magging the edges while Luke and Abby were kind of fine tuning things. And then once he gets the edges mag, he'll shoot his wet pad if he needs it, which they needed one more pad there to reach with that 14 foot screed. And then they'll just get it screeded. I mean, things seem to be going pretty smoothly for them, from what I can tell you. I mean, they don't even look like they need to talk to each other, really. They just they just know what to do, and they do it, and they get it done. Again, Abby's picking up raking pretty good. This was her first summer. And there's a, you know, there's a little trick to doing that. You, you can't just stick anybody on there and say, hey, go at it without teaching them and telling them how to do it, why to do it this way, and why we need it a certain way when we screed. They kind of need to know the reason we like, the, the, or at least the way we like it when we screed like that. Yeah, now they got it about 90% done. They can finish 
pouring that little piece out right there so we we hate it when we get a shovel out too much a couple shovelfuls isn't too bad but when you get a shovel out a wheelbarrow or something that it just makes a big mess and we'll strike it off we like setting our door boards right to grade too so we know the garage doors are really flush and level so Abby's gonna finish up bull floating this Darren's over there talking to the homeowner so he's you know, he's just building a, a relationship with him, telling him how everything went, how we did everything, why we did it this way. Because our, this is our first day, really, on the job, so we haven't even met anybody. So it makes it good that Darren can be kind of personal like that and just have a, a little bit of communication going on to set the homeowner at ease, answer any of his questions if he has any. But for me... I would say that everything went really, really well without me there. <laughs> I don't even think these guys need me anymore. What do you think? But uh, let me know down in the comments again. How do you think it went? Um, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.